communication led to, and there is a need for us to set up the voting form before we comment. Good afternoon, everyone. We want to take out this time to recognize the chairman of the governing council, the person of the Dr. Veronica Oguagu. You are very much welcome. And then we, we have other members of the governing council. We have uh, in our midst this afternoon, Mala Hassan Baba. Mala Hassan Baba, you are very much welcome, sir. We have Mala Ahmad Oman. Mala Ahmad Oman. Honorable Samuel Jaro. Chief Mrs. Yabo Akamba, you're welcome. Aisha, Akia Aisha Abe, you're welcome. Alaji Jani Yusu. And then we have a some of our uh, staff here who are members of the Governing Council. We have uh, Dr. Kelejiko. We have Aristatio Okushaye. We have CPL uh, Tamplan Alunku and Assistant. Aristatio H.O. Daudu. And Mr. B.J. Onetute. I recognize in our meeting this afternoon our indefatigable resident, architect O.O. Abidu. And we also have in our meeting uh, other members of this management team. We have on the There is also uh, in our meeting this afternoon the representative of the Federal Ministry of Education, Mrs. Yabo, I want to be welcome. We are honored to have in our meeting this afternoon our deputy director, engineer Ogunfayo. We have our registrar as well, Dr. Mrs. Ogunfayo. And uh, our librarian, Dr. Mrs. Bolasi Atuluma. And then the poster, Mr. Ajibode. Oh, I don't know what I'm We recognize in our midst all important dignities, especially our guest lecturer for this afternoon, who happens to be the immediate past uh, uh, Vice Chancellor of the University of Lagos, Professor Rahman Lagos. And then we have uh, our Baba here. The, you know that when the music uh, technology students uh, were about to start, they mentioned that uh, it was instrumental to the establishment of the department. We have uh, Dr. Uh, Papa Ijikule. Uh, You're very much welcome, sir. We recognize and amidst all other important dignitaries. That have been invited. I want to take out this time to recognize all of the deans, the deans of schools in this polytechnic. We have the dean uh, school of uh, applied sciences, dean school of management studies, dean uh, school of uh, communication and information science. We have uh, dean school of engineering, dean school of part time studies. Can you all please rise up for recognition? All these, these. Then we also have in our list all various directors. I don't want to go about mentioning those. Please, all the directors present, could you please rise up for recognition? Thank you. And then uh, we also have in our list this afternoon heads of department. All heads of department, we have about 64 departments. Can all the heads of departments rise up for recognition? All heads, the acting heads of department. They are all welcome. Sir and ma. We 
I'm going to go on to the very first item of our program, which is a national anthem and a contemporary anthem. Please, we have to all rise. Thank you very much for coming to visit our mass. 
Um, once again, we welcome you to the convocation lecture as part of the activities marking the 28th convocation ceremony of the Federal Polytechnic in Lago. Um, we recognize everybody, even if you don't mention your names, it's because of our time, please pardon us, we will happily. God bless you, sir, and man. The next item on our agenda is the welcome address by the chairman Convocation Lectures for the Team, Mr. Inferno Wall. Uh, since starting on the existing protocol, it is the immense pleasure that I finally welcome you all to this temple making location, marking the 20th competition lecture of the Sun After Polytechnic in Nigeria. This event is considered extremely paramount due to the pride of place which largely occupies in our personal and corporate lives. As we all know, apart from our colleagues in the general population, who believe in their planet, every other population believes in the continuous nature of learning, which is the mother of all the human endeavors. It therefore gives me the pleasure to be in this other country, we are one of the most brilliant experts in the world land, in the person of Professor Raman A. Bello, the Professor of Chemical Engineering, and the immediate past Vice Chancellor of the University of Lagos will be our guest lecturer. <laughs> in furtherance of the assertion mentioned earlier, Convocation Lecture is one of the most prominent milestones of the academia. Without it, one will be accused of falling short of the recognized global best prices of these academic exercises. As any convocation ceremony without it might be termed as a mere campaign. The title of this year's convocation lecture, without attempting to preempt the guest lecturer, is Polytechnic Education in Nigeria and Current Global Reality. The topic of this course is so important in that its effects, when put in a proper perspective, will resonate beyond this geographical space. I must appreciate the members of the academic board for choosing to discuss this apt and timely theme during this period. Uh, saying anything beyond this point might amount to the usurpation of the assignment of our guest lecturer. Therefore, I will serve this note. These people, guests, ladies and gentlemen, I once again welcome to this guest convocation lecture and wish each and every one of us happy listening. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you very much for being proud of our boss. Like I said earlier, this is the convocation lecture for the 20th convocation ceremony of the Federal Polytechnic Elaro. And it is my pleasure to inform you that this program here is being aired live by Poly Elaro at 2.1 FM. And uh, it's being made live as well on all social media. Thank you very much. You are welcome. The next item is the rector's opening remarks. The chairman's opening remarks. The chairman's opening remark, and please join me in welcoming the chairman of the public council, the federal polytechnic in Lago. Let me stand on the existing protocol. I know it was, wasn't read out, but I want to welcome everyone present here. I want to thank God for a day like this. There is no nation that can grow and develop a technological base without technical education. However, despite the large number of federal and state polytechnics that have been established in the country, Nigeria is still regarded as a technological backward country. Besides, polytechnic graduates have joined their university counterparts in the search of non existing jobs rather than using their technical knowledge to create solutions 
to the new health problems confronting the country and creating jobs for themselves and others in the process. From all indications, as far as polytechnic education is concerned, Nigeria has not maximized its potential and different reasons can be accused for this unpalatable reality. I believe this is not the time to lament or complain of what is not working in our polytechnic educational system. Rather, the focus should be on the way forward, especially when we have a professor, Professor Rahamun A. Bello, a professor of chemical engineering from Vita and was formerly the vice chancellor of the University of Naples. I pray God that he's going to do justice to this paper. I just pray so. When you take a look at countries like China and South Korea, they were relatively unknown about 50 years ago. They are ever aggressively embraced and used technological know-how as a vehicle to transform their economies. They used their technical know-how to develop products and services that responded to global problems. They are now enjoying global technological clouds and massive revenue. For a moment, take a look around you and you will see what China and South Korea have done with their technological knowledge. From this microphone that I'm using to deliver this speech, to the air conditioners we are using in, in our halls, in our offices, in our homes, from our laptops to our mobile phones, from the television sets in our respective homes, to clothes that we put in on and either directly or indirectly from these countries. When you take a look at African countries, like South Africa, Kenya, and Rwanda, they have also embraced technological knowledge to turn their economies around for the better. What bothers me is that Nigeria is blessed with human and natural resources. What are our problems? What is wrong with us, I want to ask. With all the intelligent men and women we have in this country, has it ever occurred to you that something is wrong in this country? And what do we do? How do we get out of this mess? Because our children definitely are going to inherit the rubbish that we all are put to the ground for them. And I wonder, I wonder, unfortunately, history is not being taught in our schools again, but we shall not forget the real leaders and rulers that we have that has brought us to our years in this country. Their stories will be told. The children coming up to take our position. In a few years' time, they will know this. But before you and I pass away from this, from this country, let us put in our best to do something good. If not, they will spit on our graves and we will know precisely that we failed to do things for them. There is nothing they want to inherit now. I must tell you the fact. Three months ago, I had a dream that trains were hijacked, that bandits went out the train and they were selecting people out. And I did myself, I was looking at them. I looked through the window of the train and saw planes, aeroplanes ran there also. And I prayed. But I knew that one day that dream would come. And look at what has happened recently. We all have to go on our knees and ask God for forgiveness because you and I, we have walked far away from God. This is a serious matter I'm telling you. We have walked far away from Him. We have to retrace ourselves back to Him so that He will help us. Let's not call Him God, 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 God. Let's not call Him. He has given us our will. Your will is yours. Nobody can take it from you. We have to stand up in any form you have. Please stand up and ask God to give you the courage, to give us the courage to change things that are wrong. Let it be good. So that by the time we are gone, people will remember us and tell God, thank you for that man. Thank you for my father. Thank you for my mother. Professor, I want to thank you because the team, the topic you are going to deliver, will intend this education in Nigeria and current global reality is very important. The problem is that. If we deliver this topic now, and your recommendations are given, will they understand? This is the problem. Will they understand?
the bedroom with you. This is when our challenge lies. And God, who used David to kill Goliath, who thought it was all and all, will use you and I to do this. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor. Thank you very much. I think you deserve a bigger and better round of applause. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There is a need for us to restate the protocol once again. The Chairman of the Global Council and all other members of the Global Council here present, the Rector and all his management team, the deans of schools, directors, the dignitaries invited, our guest lecturer, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and of course, uh, gentlemen of the press, my Lord, spiritual and temporal, we all we welcome you to this uh, 20th convocation lecture of the Federal Polytechnic in Laro. And uh, we are going to have a professor from Man be able to speak to us very, very soon. But before he does that, I want to call on an alumnus of the, the University of Davis, one of us here, who also happens to be a member of the Global Council. I only call on Barrister Timothy Oluwadogo Obusheye to give us a special presentation. Since the protocol has been established, I will do this. But let me start by making credential regards to Chairman of the General Government Council, highly debating our own Dr. of this, the Rolita Ogadu, Justice of this. And let me also reflect a traditional institution. Whoever knew the Dr. S.A.K. in the community, we thank God for his life, for being here. I find you welcome. Member of the Government Council, the guest speaker of today, and the only former Vice Chancellor of the Metropolitan University of Nigeria, even in the African continent, Professor Ramon Bill. Welcome, sir. As part of the preparations for the 28th Convocation Ceremony, the academic board was convened a couple of months ago to consider a list of stars called nominees by the Bamidele Federal Law Convocation Lecture Committee. As they read out the data, one after the other, with a brief on the academics, Professor Ramon and his fellow student drew contrast reports and endorsements from the student members of the board. Proceedings of the board were sponsored mutually. The great hit alumni in the house sought to serve on the joint of the scholars' foundation in Lou for the greatest advertised in their right number to have no day for such. As the friends of the university said, the polytechnic man of alumni in the house reminded all that the foundation was more important for the sustainability of the superstructure. The chairman of the board, I think, the nominee is a thorough great academic, cerebral in his research interests, witty in wisdom, great thinker, world academic scholar, shrewd administrator. Manager of Human Materials, and the Foundation, Pius and Liberal Muslim, who invest quality time to promote science and technological education globally. Consequently, I did it and we ruled that the path for this year's computer lecturer after fits the release date, and which we are now aware of it. According to him, only he can call the team. It is therefore my singular honor and privilege. And as announced by the MC, as a distinguished alumnus of the University of Davos, to request and humbly to that Professor Ramon and Sabelu should rise. And again, standing for the agreed citation. 
to the web of science. Madam Chairman of the Innovative Government Council, standing before this galaxy of academicians, traditional rulers, technocrats, captain of the industry, and all my academic folks of the greatest project in Nigeria, the project of all studies, is the 2010 occasion lecturer of the federal project in Laro. Thank you very much. Professor Ramon Azabello, fellow academic of engineering, is a chemical engineer by profession. He is the mid-test past vice chancellor of the University of Lagos. <laughs> Professor Bello is an indigenous of the borough in your local government area of the state. Just like one of his ministers, Professor Kianishola, is equally from that zone. He attended a new United School, a borough, now Holy Trinity School, for his primary education and the Bible College in Naro. Now we are for his education. He later attended a technical college in Naro. Now the Polytechnic in Naro, where he obtained an OLG in mechanical engineering. Before proceeding to the ancient city of Ilefe, to study in the University of Ife, now of Bafemi, I would have won the university. Where Professor Ramon graduated with first class honors degree in chemical engineering in 1974. For his programming education, Professor Bello attended the University of Otanu in Ontario, Canada, where he earned his MSc in 1977 and PhD in 1981, both in chemical engineering. <laughs> Professor Bello served his National Youth Service Corps with the then North Eastern State Minister of Commerce and Industry in Nigeria for those states. He later worked briefly as the Federal Minister of Petroleum Resources as a petroleum engineer before proceeding for his further education. He joined the service of the University of Lagos as an assistant lecturer in 1977 and rose steadily to the post of lecturer 2, lecturer 1, and so lecturer in 1981, 1982, that's a record one, and 1985 respectively. was appointed associate professor in 1991 and professor of chemical engineering in 1998. Professor Bello was the immediate, was the former head of the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of Lagos between 1999 and 2002. He became a member of the management team at the University where he was appointed a deputy vice chancellor of management services in April 2010. In May 2012, he was named the acting vice chancellor and later in November of that same year, he was appointed a deputy vice chancellor of the University of Lagos. One significant landmark of the Governor's achievements in Unilad was that for over five years period when he served as vice chancellor, he ensured that a total of 108 academic staff were promoted as professors. 188 academic staff promoted as their professors. Professor Bello was a member of the State Internal Council as the State Commissioner for Special Duties between 1994 and 1996. Before then, he was the National Project Manager for the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, and the Internal Labor Organization, IAWS, on strategies for self-employment promotion, which ran simultaneously in Nigeria in 1991 and 1992. Professor Bill specialized in biochemical engineering processes, and he has carried out researches and consultancy in industrial biotechnology. He also has offered consultancy and professional services to various organizations, including Nigeria Liquid Federal Gas, Nigeria Limited, Air Petroleum, Chair Petroleum Development Corporation, and Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation. Professor Bello was a member of the Central Working Group of Region 2020 and served as an alternative chairman for the energy and transportation sub centers. He has served as a member of the Government Council of Honor BC on Ombaijo University and the State College of Education. <laughs> Professor Bello is a 
college in Bath. He was the chairman of EMI in Lagos for over 10 years. And he's currently the chairman on the board of trustees of EMI Land Development Forum and the chairman of EMI Development Council. He's sad. From the little sad. As the chairman of the Land Muslim Community and is the array at the end of the whole central mosque. Governor Bello had a legacy project named 